So in this final part of the tutorial, I'm going to look at how you can use a fluid simulation to affect the motion of your particles. And to do that, I've, I've just started off with a big box here, which we're going to turn into some dense uh, smoke. So let me go down inside, and we can see that I've just got the box, and I've got an ISO offset that's turning into smoke. The reason you can't see the smoke is because I've got wireframe on. And there we are. That's our smoke. So we need to now set up a, a fluid simulation. And we want to set that up in a different place, probably, from our simulation of the particles. And we can do that uh, easily by clicking on this node here, right-clicking. And you can just see, probably, we, we get the option to create a new simulation. And then further down, you can you won't see this on the screen, but there is a way to choose which simulation you want. So let's just rename this auto.network fluid. And we're just going to do a very simple simulation. So I just need a fluid container, a smoke container. So control click on that. And we just get a very simple smoke simulation laid out for us. And I'm just going to take the container and I'm going to resize it to match the size of the box. And by the way, the box is, if I press shift, I can change both of these at once. So that's, that doesn't have to be exact, but we need it to be more or less the same. The box, the original box, by the way, is the same is the right size to encompass the whole of our simulation. So if I go back into wireframe, um, we can see that uh, there is our source and there's the path, so it's going to be contained within this box. Now, quite often, uh, if you're used to using fluid simulations, you'd think that you need to go onto this shelf here, the populate container shelf, and then bring in the smoke, initial smoke. In fact, there is a very simple way to do it if you've got a very basic setup, which is here on the smoke node. You'll see that there's a tab which says initial data. So I'm just going to set the density SOP path to that uh, node that I just laid down, the box. What's it called? Fluid source. There we are. So that's going to bring that in. And I'm also going to bring in the same volume to be our temperature path. And the reason that I'm doing that is because we want this to have temperature because I want to get a bit of buoyancy into here. And the next thing I'm going to do is bring in our emitter, which is here. So I'm going to select the emitter and I'm going to bring it in as an RBD static object. So that's brought in. And that will give us enough to produce our simulation. So let me go back into this order.network fluid network. And we've got our smoke set up. Let me go back into how to wireframe view. We can see our smoke. Uh, but in fact, I'm going to use the guide tab here, not to visualize the smoke, which we're not really interested in, um, but uh, to visualize the velocity, which is the field we're eventually going to use. And initially it doesn't have any velocity. But as we start moving, we should see, there we are, that we get velocity. And this grid is probably a little bit dense, so let me enlarge it, just, just speed things up for a bit. You can use, if you're prepared to wait for the simulation, you can use the large grid. There we go. So we see that uh, basically that's creating disruption. But what's happening here is that we're getting the gas all falling down because we've got gravity enabled. And indeed, if I switch back on the visualization of the smoke and turn off the visualization of the velocity, uh, we will see that our smoke just is all falling down like that, which is not what we want. We actually want it to rise up. So I'm going to turn off gravity lay out these nodes by using the L key. On the smoke solver, we've got this uh, parameter called buoyancy lift. 
and that tells us that for every unit of temperature there'll be an upward force on the smoke. Now because we had gravity on that was actually stronger than this lift force and now what we should see is our smoke sort of slowly rising up. There's a there's an error on the display here. This version of Houdini doesn't seem to like displaying this stuff so that you can see the smoke is, is rising up. So I want to introduce one more force to make this a little bit more interesting. And what I have in mind is a uniform force. A uniform force allows you to obviously exert a uniform force. I'm going to turn this to 111. Now that's going to be rather boring because it all points in the same direction. But one of the things you can do in DOPS is affect a uniform force with a noise field. So I've laid down the noise field and you connect that to the second connector here and this will then multiply that force by the noise that we're generating here. And I've got to make sure that my noise varies between minus one and plus one. And I'm going to give it a little bit of an offset. So I'm going to give it an offset. To, uh, let's there we go, dollar T. So it changes with time. And let's have a look at that. Well, it's a slightly subtle effect. You're, you're not seeing a great deal of noise here. So let me increase the noise. And I can do that just by multiplying up the force here, because this will be a multiplier for the noise. And we should now see, uh, yep, we can see that there's much, much more noise here. So for the moment, that looks fine as a velocity field. Clearly, if you were doing this for real, you would want to tweak that, make sure it was exactly what you wanted. And we can turn off uh, the visualization of a number of these things. Let me just enlarge this. I need to find out... There we are. That's where my smoke import is. So this is importing the results of that simulation. And we're just going to use this node, so I'll just stick the uh, display on here as well. And this is going to import the fields that we want. Now, in fact, the only field that we want is this velocity field. So I can turn off the import of these other things. And what I'm going to do is lay down a file cache node, because that's going to allow me to save this out to disk, which just saves me time. So the location is fine. Uh, let's call this fluid cache frame 1 to 100, and let me save it to disk. And I'll pause the video while that's running through. Oh, when it seems to be running so fast that I don't need to pause the video. So once that's rendered out, uh, all you do is you load it from disk, and then you have your velocity field here. So how do we use the velocity field to affect our simulation? Well, let me go back into our simulation and make sure we've got everything. We can turn off the display of the velocity field there of the smoke import node. And we can go into the source particles node. Ah, and because we're not at the first frame, that's calculating. In fact, I mean we should go into the Autodot network, the original one that has the particle simulation. And on the emitter tab, let me go back to having 50,000 particles. We're just going to demonstrate what this looks like. I'm not, I'm not going to render it all out. And the key node uh, that you need here, the pop sub-tab. So let me find it here. Pop advect by volumes. And the pop evict by volumes takes a SOP, so in other words, the results of the simulation, which we've got stored down here in smoke import. And the, if we select the fluid cache node, that's just going to read things off disk. It's not going to recalculate that fluid simulation. The field name we want is indeed velocity. And then here we can choose the effect that this is going to have let me turn off, in order to visualize this, the other forces in this scene. And then also make sure... There we are. Okay, and I can just play this through. And 
we can see the effect is, is quite subtle here. It just sort of lifts it up and a little bit of variance. We can change uh, the way that this node is, is doing the advection. There are three options here. There's the update force, update velocity, and update position. We've just looked at update force. Let's have a look at update velocity. And this blends whatever existing velocity of the particles with the velocity that's derived from the field. And we can see it has a much more dramatic effect of splitting up those paths. And finally, uh, we can update position. And this has the most dramatic effect of all, as we can see. And it, you know, these are, it's an artistic decision as to how you want to use this node. And you can, in each case, change the scale of the effect using this control here. So let me just uh, turn this back on. And I will leave it with update force. And let's just play this through. And we can see we're getting now a combination of the noise that we had earlier with the effect of the fluid simulation, which makes it a little bit more realistic. So that's just a tip on how to use a fluid simulation to affect your particles. The fluid simulation, by the way, does not have to be hugely detailed. You don't really get much of an advantage by running a very, very detailed simulation. Uh, let's just have a look at our simulation here. So this is 100,000 voxels, this one, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, you could, of course, go up here and reduce the division size and thus increase the, the, the accuracy of the simulation, but you probably wouldn't gain very much. Anyway, I hope that has been a useful series on refreshing uh, the scenario of wanting to produce an effect of smoke using particles. See you next time.